So you folks all know what they say about pinions, right? Well, everyone's got one. In today's episode, we're talking pinions. That's right guys, today we're trying to set the pinion angle on Dale the truck here. Our pinion angle is pointed up a little bit too far. We've got to get it to come down. Actually, as it's sitting right there now, seems to be fine. The pinion and the drive shaft are in direct line. The problem is, is as soon as you set this down on the ground, the pinion angle goes up. So we've got to see if we can roll the pinion angle forward a little bit so that it matches the drive shaft and the uh, transmission tail shaft as it comes out. So we've got our gauge here to see how far we've got to go. And what we're going to have to do is we're either going to have to shim the plate here or we're going to have to take and cut the uh, little bracket that holds this axle in place there. So we're going to determine that once we get going. I have no shims. We're probably going to end up making our own, but it's time to get to work. So in the last video, you guys watched me make the cribbing for Dale so that we can get it up in the air and crawl under it with it sitting on its own suspension. It's almost like having a four post lift, only you still kind of got to crawl under it. But, uh, so what we're going to do is we've got things all loosened up there. Then we're going to set the truck down on the cribbing and crawl under it, under it and see what the angle is and how far we've actually got to adjust it. So I've got all the U-bolts loose. We're going to set the truck down and we're going to slide underneath. So come along for the ride. So with the cribbing in place, this is exactly how this is supposed to be set up. I can set the truck down on its own weight, and as you can see, I've got about two and a half feet there that I can crawl under with the creeper and do any work that I need to do. So let's get underneath the truck and see how we're going to shim that uh, pinion angle or whether or not we have to cut the brackets that are already there. Okay, so we're under the truck now. Everything is sitting on its own weight, but as you can see, the pinion angle is pointed up quite a bit and if we look at our gauge our gauge says we're about five degrees uh, off and uh, we're gonna have to try and fix that we want that thing to be reading at zero which is where the transmission tail shaft is and we want to get it as close to that as possible so one of the things that we've got to have that we're gonna have to do is try and get that pinion angle to angle down and we can do that by either shimming up underneath the plate here or we're actually gonna have to physically roll the axle ahead. So let me get in behind there and see what it's going to take to get that shimmed up. Okay, so I think what we're going to end up having to do is this bracket right here, it's got two little tabs that stick up into the old uh, spring mount and they're restricting it from rolling forward or backward. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go up on the front one and cut a little bit out of it and let that roll forward as the weight gets transferred onto it. So let's get this thing back up in the air and get the axle supported and see if we can't get those brackets out of there. All right, so we've got our plates and our nuts off uh, the U-bolts here. So now all we've got to do is we've got to jack up the differential and get these brackets out so we can get them trimmed down. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay. So here are the brackets that hold it in place. And the two tabs that I was referring to are the two that stuck up on the end. See how they're tapered there. Um, I'm not sure why they wouldn't have made that so that there's really only one way for them to go on with no adjustment. But I think they were just thinking if you needed more angle or less angle that you simply could have just put some shims underneath of it. Well, I don't have any shims, uh, but I did do some research. And what I found was some of the shims that allow you to go two to three degrees uh, in the back were roughly a quarter of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off a quarter of an inch on this front leading edge here on each one. We'll put it back together. We'll check the angle then, and we'll see if we're moving forward or back. If I've gone too far, I can always go back and shim it after the fact. But I don't have shims like I said. We're gonna try it this way today. So 
let's get these cut up. So we've got our U-bolts back in place with the bracket. The problem now seems to be that where the bracket tapers right here seems to be hitting on the bracket, the old spring perch. So we're going to have to take these back off and grind away a little bit on the edges. And the same thing over here on this one so that this bracket can slide up inside the, the old spring perch. That's what's keeping this thing from making any adjustment at all. So after beating and thrashing and banging around here for about uh, half an hour, that's what I've come to realize. So I've got to undo everything I just did in the last half hour and uh, go back and grind them out, put them back together and try this again. So I'll go do that and I'll be right back. So I think we've got this thing finally licked I've got the notches notched out and we're now got everything all tightened up so we're going to set it down and uh, see where the pinion angle is. We'll measure it and see how close to a zero we are from when we initially took our first measurement. Uh, I had a little bit of a struggle getting this axle or this side of the axle to seat back in on the center bolt. Uh, just messing with it there for a while, finally got it uh, finagled in there. and. It wasn't without a few choice words. Anyways, let's get this thing back down on the cribbing and then we'll crawl underneath, we'll take a measurement and see how we did. So based on that, it looks like we're just a hair below zero. And I think I can live with that. We're gonna get it out on the road and see if the vibration is gone. If it is, well, we know we fixed it. So having said that, it's time to clean up and go home. Also, I did get that one leaf back in, so once we get it actually sitting down on the ground, we'll take some measurements again all the way around the truck and just see if it's leveled itself out a little tiny bit. Okay, now for the moment of truth. I guess I'd say the vibration's gone. Let me just slow down a little bit. Yeah, vibration's gone for sure. I think we fixed the problem. So we're going to chalk this one up to a success, guys. That is going to conclude this video. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I hope to see you soon in the next video. So a little while back, I had invited you guys to send me your ride, and I will feature it on one of my videos on my channel. So if you've got a favorite vehicle that you want the world to see, then put a quick two minute video together and email it to me. My address is, uh, my email address is in the description box below, and I will feature it in an upcoming video. So Grant, who is straight six fan on YouTube, and I are trying to get my friend Kip from America Bumper to Bumper to 1,000 subscribers. And how we are going to do that is with the Bumper to Bumper Challenge. I want to see every vehicle you guys have ever owned in a five minute video. That's the challenge. Once you get it done, you can upload it to YouTube and all the rules are in the description box below. I hope you guys will follow along and help get my buddy Kip up to 1,000 subscribers. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. We're on our way to 5,000 subs, and once we get there, you know what's gonna happen. That's right, we're gonna blow up a PT Cruiser. So help me get to 5K, and when we do, we'll do a video of blowing up a PT Cruiser. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.